Why did I shave my beard? It's getting rid of my beard. Now let's have a look. What do we got here? Before, after, before, after, before, after. Look what you did, you idiots! You made me in the beaker. Do I really look like Tom Hanks? Why is it that my eyebrows look more like tarantulas resting on my forehead? Get it off! Get it off! It's on my forehead! You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. Hey, what's going on everybody? Time for another Ask Cam Cannon question and today I'm gonna take it easy. I'm gonna sit down and I really want to talk to you guys because it's kind of an important question. It's one that's come up a few times before and I wanted to make sure that this one was answered properly. But to be honest, I'm probably gonna go on a bit of a ramble, not really a rant because I don't like to rant, but I'm going to share with you my beliefs uh, as to the answer of this question, okay? Now, um, it comes from Keith Allen, and he asks, how do you feel about those who hunt, kill, and eat alligators and turtles? I felt confused ever since your Deer Meat for Dinner video. Will you be doing future collaborations with them? FYI, I looked at your analytics from socialblade.com and saw that you lost 428 subscribers after that Deer Meat for Dinner video. Usually you gain about 480 subs per day. I'm sure deer meat is a wonderful guy, but does he fit with your message about breeding, conservation, and stewardship? Great question, Keith. I appreciate you uh, going out there and asking me this question. Um, I'm gonna answer this in a long ramble, okay? Um, so first question was, how do I feel about those who hunt, kill, and eat alligators and turtles? Um, it's not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, it's, it's something that I personally wouldn't do. However, um, I have eaten alligator. Um, and I used to have this very militant stance uh, when I was very young against eating reptiles. Obviously, I love reptiles. So I was all against it and I, would, I, I actually made my parents leave a restaurant because I saw frog legs were on the menu. I was about six years old, but I whinged and cried and complained and I actually made them get up and leave the Sea Cove restaurant in Cinema Riches uh, back in 1982 or 81. It was a long time ago. Now, looking back, you know, and knowing what I know now about living here in Florida and having gone to places like Gatorama that are working alligator farms, I've come to understand that conservation is not just not eating animals. Uh, sometimes it's working with people and hunters uh, and that in turn can be conservation. Um, I actually was at this alligator farm, Gatorama, about 12 years ago and we were doing the bull gator roundup and I was with so many crocodile biologists and zoo people and basically uh, we stopped working for the day and it was time to eat. And what did they serve? They served alligator. Uh, and I thought, I remember saying to my friend Flavio Morrissey, I said, man, how can we do this? And he's like, it's because of farms like this that the wild population of alligators has rebounded to the degree that it has. Um, and it really opened my eyes because I had a very myopic view of conservation. And I had a very myopic view of the world. The world's not a perfect place. And like I said, I'm gonna ramble a bit, guys, and this is gonna go all over the, the, the place, this video. Um, the world's not a perfect place. Uh, but you know what? You have to subscribe to the, to the fact that human beings are of nature. Therefore, everything human beings have done, whether you like it or not, and believe me, I don't like everything we've done, um, we are of nature. So basically, no matter how much concrete we make or buildings or whatever we do, we are working within the confines of what Earth has provided us to manipulate. We're a very intelligent species, 
but that intelligence doesn't always serve as well. Now trust me, I'll get to a point somewhere down the road in this video. But basically guys, my worldview has kind of changed as I've gotten a little bit older. I selfishly love these animals. I'm sitting amongst the redfoots. You can see them kind of wandering around me. Would I personally eat a tortoise, a turtle or tortoise? No. Would I begrudge someone who legally hunted and killed an alligator, who legally hunted and killed a turtle that was not an endangered species and ate it? No, I wouldn't. Uh, that's the short answer. And the reason being is I believe hunters are conservationists. Um, you know, when we're talking about factory farming, that is just, that's tough, man. That's a tough thing for me to get around. And I, um, I do eat meat. I am not a vegan. I do have close friends that are vegan and I respect their position. Um, but I think hunters are the next best thing because if you are a real hunter, you're paying into your state parks. You're paying into conservation when you buy those permits, when you buy those land use for, uh, fees. You're actually giving to protecting that space for those animals. The one thing we gotta remember also is that nature is not perfect. We're of nature and we're not perfect. And even nature itself is constantly evolving. Um, and it's perfect in the way that it doesn't care. Nature uh, doesn't have the same feelings that human beings possess. Nature just is. So you can also look at a hunter as doing a pretty good thing. Sometimes animals die of starvation, like deer when they overpopulate themselves. They die of starvation. To die cold of starvation is a horrible death. To die of disease is a horrible death. Most animals in the wild die of disease. That's nature's failsafe. In fact, when a population of animals gets so wild, if starvation doesn't get them, disease does. Nature always has checks and balances. And we, as hunters, responsible hunters, will be part of those checks and balances. Predators themselves are part of the checks and balances. I can tell you, you wouldn't want uh, a disease like rabies to uh, start going wild because rabies is a disease that there's no cure. And that is nature's ultimate fail-safe device. When a species does too well, if it's a mammal, rabies can happen and completely decimate that, that whole population. So it's very important for a legal, sustainable hunt um, that we are not hunting endangered animals. Personally, I would never condone the hunting of any big game like lions, uh, tigers, um, elephants, giraffe. I just think, you know, if you're not eating it, why do we need to do that just to kind of show off? But then again, other people have said these animals are old, they're infirm, they're dying. I just personally don't agree with that. But I do agree with people like Rob Arrington from Deer Meat for Dinner. He's a guy that loves to live off the land. He loves the land. I know this man personally. This is a guy that I respect because he's not out there just killing for fun. Does he get enjoyment out of supplying food and being out there in the wild and, and kind of getting out there and living off the land? I'm sure he does um, because that's part of a heritage that many of us have lost. We're disconnected from our food. Um, I really do uh, like him. Uh, he's asked me for some turtles for his pond and I'm gonna give them to him and I joked around with his, Mr. Arrington his dad I said you better not eat these guys and uh, they're not they're gonna be pets um, You know, I would hope that my example of my friendship showing them that how some animals are under extreme pressure uh, Maybe they aren't gonna eat them as much, but then again guys one hunter eating and catching a turtle for himself is way different than poachers going out there and grabbing all these animals for the food trade and then trying to make a buck off of wildly collected animals. It's way different. Um, it's just apples and oranges, man. Um, over harvesting is a terrible thing. Real hunters don't do that. So, you know, you may ask, why don't you become vegan, Kenan? The fact is, is I don't want to become vegan. Um, you know, I, I do eat meat. I think I would like to eat harvested meat from say hog or deer. That's interesting to me because, you know, as someone who loves animals, um, I wanna make sure that I'm not necessarily contributing to the factory farming. We try to eat organic as much as possible here. I do eat a lot of vegetables. I do think the base of your food pyramid should be veggies um, with meat thrown in. We do need some kind of animal protein. Um, I'm sure there'll be a disagreement to that statement, but uh, baby steps, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. Uh, animals eat other animals. A lion eats zebra. 
Uh, chimpanzees will hunt and kill monkeys. Um, many different primates will supplement their uh, diet with different insects. Um, it's just a fact of life. Um, as I've come to appreciate animals more, I've come to have a different world view. I hope this is making sense. Like I said, I, I've often said we're very fortunate in the United States and Western civilization. We are extremely fortunate because if we were living in other places of the world, um, you really can't decide where your next meal is coming from. You just eat it. Uh, bush meat is big in Africa, um, in, in the tropics, you know, places like South America. Indigenous people have often eaten whatever they can find. As a matter of fact, if you read the book Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind, um, it basically talks about our history as people, as a species. We went from hunter-gatherers, following the herds, following the foods, basically we'd wander around a home range. And it wasn't until the agricultural revolution that we were able to become more sedentary, that we grew our own food, that we grew livestock. Now with that adventation, with that um, discovery of agriculture, okay, and farming, it was good and bad for us in that we became more sedentary. We were a little bit harder on our animal friends, okay? Um, in, instead of, it was probably the worst thing to happen to animals because we domesticated them. We then, you know, put them in pens and we started to tinker with the way, uh, whether it's genetically, we started to tinker with how we fed them. So it enabled us to kind of grow into the society that we are now but it also created all kinds of other dilemmas with health problems and sewage problems and all kinds of other things that hopefully as a society I'm getting attacked by my by my look at this here here's a here's a tortoise on my boot okay this is a herbivorous tortoise that is going after me they just want to eat oh come on little buddy come on little buddy you got to let go it's a boot it's not good for you you don't want to eat the boot anyway uh, where was I? Yeah, all right. Uh, so I was rambling about um, modern society and how it's both good and bad. We live uh, probably the best that we've ever lived in our planet's history as human beings. Trust me, it was a lot tougher back when we were hunter-gatherers. It was a lot tougher in the 18th century. It was a lot tougher back then. It was a lot more violent, believe it or not. Um, so today, because we live in the society, because we have built on what our forebearers have done, we can make choices like to become vegan. We can make these choices. Um, and whether you choose it for health or you choose it because you just love animals, I commend you. Um, but there's more than one way to basically be good to animals. Uh, you don't have to go straight vegan. Um, I do what I can for the animals I love. And I started this by saying I'm a bit selfish. And I gotta silence my cell phone next time I uh, start a video. But anyway, um, I'm a bit selfish. And these are the animals I love. Now I love all animals, but I do eat them. That's just a fact of the nature and what I've reconciled in myself. So will I do collabs with Deer Meat for Dinner again? Yes. Um, I obviously would never do a collaboration where I'm gonna go hunt alligators uh, or hunt turtles. That's just not what I'm into. I don't wanna do that. Um, I am probably never going to go hunting. I don't think I would do it, but would I accept the meat that he uh, provides for me and my animals? Absolutely. Would I think it's an interesting video to watch a crocodile or alligator uh, eat a full prey item that's already been killed, that's a feral animal? I think it would be pretty interesting to see how those animals behave and how they eat. And it's also good enrichment for the animals. So whereas I may not be perfect in everyone's eyes, I don't claim to be, I don't want to be. I just want to be the best that I can be. And who knows where I, this will all lead, guys. You know, I'm constantly evolving, that's what's great. You can evolve your thought, um, you can change. Uh, whether you decide to eat meat or go vegan, that is a personal decision. Uh, whether you decide to become a conservationist and work with turtles and tortoises or reptiles or some other animals, that's your personal decision. But it's a decision that we're very fortunate to be able to make here in this country in Western civilization because so many other people across the globe, really, when it comes to eating an animal to feed your children or protecting an animal, it's kind of a tough sell. So as conservationists, we have to look at all different angles. It's not 
black and white. It just isn't. So conservation is a many faceted um, action. And I do believe that conservation includes responsible, legal hunting of non-endangered wildlife. Very, very important. We are part of the food chain. Uh, our brains enable us to come up with tools to figure out how to catch some of these game animals, to catch some of these other uh, apex predators, and to manage them. And I believe that proper management is an important part of conservation. It's my belief. Doesn't mean you have to agree with it. You guys can comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, as far as losing subscribers, listen, I'm doing this because I love it. I'm doing this because I'm trying to show you folks what I believe, uh, give you an inside view as to how I negotiate the world. It may work for some of you. I'm constantly changing and evolving, but it may not work for everyone. So that's my uh, heartfelt speech, my ramble, if you will, on hunting, collabs with Robert Arrington. I think he's a great guy. He has a great, great family. They were super generous to me when we were building my aquascape ecosystem pond. They provided me with beautiful logs and I want to return the favor by providing him with some beautiful animals to live in their pond. And uh, they assure me they're not going to eat them. They're going to be pets and they're going to learn. And I think that's what we do here. When you do a collaboration, it's not just to gain viewers, it's to gain insight. It's to learn from each other. It's to have a common interest and then work within those common interests and seeing how can we influence each other. Will I ever hunt? Hey, if I hunt and I can provide meat for my family off one animal for months, that is way better than going to the grocery store and kind of partaking in the wholesale slaughter of domestic animals that aren't living in the best conditions. I think it's nicer to have an animal that's been running free. You're a predator, you come along, you shoot it, it dies very quickly and then you consume its flesh. I think that's a little bit more of a fair fight. So that's my belief, guys. Right or wrong, I hope you guys will stick around for this journey. I'm trying to do the best I can to educate everybody, and I do have a love for these animals and other animals. And uh, there you go, that's my answer. All right, so uh, yeah, more collabs coming up soon with veterinarians, with Hunter, like uh, Deer Meat for Dinner, he's my neighbor, uh, and so much more fun on the channel. I hope you guys will join up and thanks for being a part of it. And Keith, thank you so much for your question and being a Patreon supporter. Um, I hope I've given you some insight as to what I believe. And I hope you all understand it and make up your own minds. Um, one more thing. The most important thing, guys, is we need to work together. Okay? Uh, the country's so divided. So many people are this way or that way. I've never been like that. Um, personally, I like to listen to people. I like to kind of meet them halfway. I like to uh, understand and learn about the world we're living in. And that includes learning and understanding people that are out there. We're not enemies. We're all wanting a clean, beautiful planet to, sus to subsist and survive on. Because that's all we got. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Camp Kenny if you want to help support more of these videos. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and then like and subscribe. Sorry about being long-winded, everybody. I'm going to shut up and leave you with shots of these beautiful redfoot tortoises here. Uh, again, these are animals that are raised in captivity to become pets, and I think that's one of the ways we can help conservation, uh, not taking from the wild. All right, everyone, there you go. I hope you're having fun out there wherever you are, and I hope you're, uh, well, I hope your new year is off to an amazing start. Mine is fresh-faced. We're starting all over. New year, new beard. Talk to you guys soon. So long. By the way, uh, everyone lost YouTube followers that day because they did a purge of phantom accounts across the entire YouTube universe. So I wasn't the only one that lost subs that day. See ya.